what I'm going to do today is to give you a bit of background to this project, why it was needed and why it was funded, uh, which will relate to why it is needed. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the summer school because I'm only going to focus on the uh, summer school part of this project uh, in this short talk. Then I'm going to give you some evidence for impact and you should be able to read this paper in the plant cell within uh, a week, I hope, since I got the uh, proofs for this paper yesterday. And then I want to just finally finish off with some uh, suggestions for opportunities of way that, ways in which we can extend this impact to others. So why was it needed and why was it funded? And um, I don't think anybody would dispute that for many years we've had low student interest in university plant science courses. That's an extremely difficult thing to quantify, so I, I'm not even going to try. Uh, our next speaker, I think, will touch on that with, uh, within student interest within schools. But the fact of the matter is, probably for several decades, universities with excellent plant science research have struggled to attract students to study plant science as a degree program, and they've even found difficulty enthusing them to take plant science courses while they're at university. Now, obviously, some graduate because we've managed to adapt and find our way through this difficult situation, and uh, some graduate with advanced knowledge of plant science, and many are inspired by individual teachers. Um, uh, so it's not quite as dire, maybe, as we might uh, think from that first statement. But there is a general lack of awareness of the importance of plant science, of, of how it matters how plants matter to the world around us. And this is the point that we really need to try and address. And this has been raised as a concern um, by the Royal Society that, in fact, a future demand for increased plant science knowledge and expertise, the sort of things that we're really going to need for the next generation to tackle these major, major global challenges that we've heard about today. Um, that in fact a future demand cannot be met. And one of the, one of the Royal Society's recommendations uh, was that universities should work with funded bodies to address this reverse in decline. So against this, uh, knowing that there is low student interest, unless we help students see the value of plant science early in their university education, they are unlikely to take full advantage of the academic expertise at university, of the great new things that plant science has to offer. That will help the workplace be competitive. So, uh, in 2004, with a bit of creative thinking from the Gatsby Plant Science Advisors, the Foundation agreed to fund a project to enthuse and inspire undergraduates through an annual summer school. And this was to be aimed at first class, uh, sorry, first year students. First class as well, but first year students. For me, this was the smart card. This attracted me to the project and this opportunity to focus on able and motivated students as soon as they start university to show them the uh, potential of plant science and then to use the, the very effective and um, efficient research network that exists within plant science to mentor those students through to their next career stage. And my take home message today is um, if you engage your first year undergraduates with plant science, uh, we can change student attitudes and behavior. So here are our scholars. Um, some are in the audience, I'm pleased to say. Uh, we have, we are now on our, we will be on our eighth school this summer. We have used three locations. Uh, the first two locations could accommodate 94 students, but latterly we have used the Emergency Planning College north of York, uh, which is a wonderful place. Um, the school is for high achieving undergraduates in their first year or second year if they are from Scottish universities, and they are from 25 UK universities that have significant levels of plant science research funding and also teach. Each of these universities has a Gatsby mentor, plant science professor, who's responsible for selecting the most deserving undergraduates, three or four undergraduates, to attend the school and then mentor them afterwards. 
And in the last two years, I'm very pleased to say that uh, we have run parallel teachers' courses with SAPS. You'll hear about SAPS in the next talk. Um, so that we can enthuse and inspire them as well to take uh, the excitement of plant science back to um, their constituencies and disseminate those messages. Now, I don't have time to go through uh, the key features of the school, but quickly through the next two slides, I just want to outline them. Changing student attitudes is a big ask, and so we had to do something special, and we were fortunate enough to have Gatsby funding to be able to do that. The venue needed to be inspirational, and it needed to use the fact that we've got plants outside. Uh, we, you can do so much. This is what I always used to say to my students. You can do so much if you look out the window. What is it that's happening to plants under those climate conditions? The program of lectures and practical classes um, is highly relevant to research agenda, both in applied and curiosity-driven re research. And we invite research leaders who are also good communicators to undergraduates uh, to talk about um, what will be the exciting projects, what needs to be done in the future. And uh, Peter Bear here is enthralling this um, audience with uh, golden, the Golden Rice story. Uh, we've, we've heard Sandy talked about needing to you know, observe and, and see the diversity around you. You have to, in pedagogical terms, give attention to encouraging students to observe and question, and so we do that as well. Careers advice is extremely important, but let's have professionals giving that advice. Students love to hear what to do next, or suggestions of what to do next, from people that they can identify with. So um, helping people take that next step, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, is, uh, is an important part. Our tutorial structure and general atmosphere give students a lot of practice in building confidence in questioning and networking. These skills, we all know they're extremely important. You have to help students practice them and provide the framework for that to happen. The event's intense, it's hard work, and there's not an assessment in sight. Um, and students begin to see themselves as future scientists rather than as students. So how have we measured the impact of this project? And I'd like to acknowledge Aurora Leavesley, who's in the audience, uh, who has re been responsible for handling all of this student survey data. Uh, our five-year study covered the schools from 2005 to 2010. We, um, so provided five surveys before the summer school, at the end of the summer school, normally entering the second year of university, normally entering the final year of university, and on graduation. We needed three comparison groups, and we used undergraduates from uh, Leeds who did not attend the summer school, postgraduates from Leeds, and BBSRC-funded postgraduates. So the first thing we needed to do was to actually see if our perception that students find plants boring or uninteresting was correct. And so in answer to this question, what we see here is before the summer school, only 53% find plants interesting or very interesting. And yet after the summer school, that goes up to over 90% and that very high level is retained right the way through to graduation. By comparison, students who haven't attended the school in either first, second, or third year have this relatively low level of interest. When we asked the students, was it the um, uh, summer school that was responsible for changing their opinion, uh, over 80% confirmed that that event, that exposure to what plant science can offer in their first year gave them a more positive view of, plant, and that's, of plants, and that's even when they were asked two to four years after the school. In the paper, we have other data tracking their module choices, which I don't have time to go through, but has this had an effect on uh, the number of students entering plant science uh, research? So of the first four, from the first four schools, 2004 to 2008, 44% of those students progressing to, plant, uh, to PhD chose plant-related projects. 44% equates to 40 students, 
so on average 10 per year. And we were very pleased with that and thought this was uh, a high number. When we looked at the comparison groups, this um, biological sciences, Faculty of Biological Sciences at Leeds, 221 students in this sample, and 1,500, over 1,500 over three years from the BBSRC here, we see that only 12% go to plant-related projects. And uh, this number equates to a, a very approximate figure of 63 plant-related PhDs per year funded by the BBSRC. Some, of course, will, will go to students who have attended the summer school. When we asked whether or not this group here, were whether their decision was influenced by attending the school in the first year, 75% of them said it was. So 30 out of 40 of our students may have chosen a different path, and probably they would have chosen a different path. It may have been cancer biology or, or something that we know uh, is high up there on their agenda. But having an event in the first year uh, focused on plants has changed their, um, that uh, group of, of students' opinions. I don't have time to go through this at all, but for any of you who are... Um, uh, skeptical or want to be reassured that undergraduates are interested in plant science, please take a look at some of these um, student comments because it's extremely gratifying reading. So my last slide then, or my last two slides, um, what can we learn from this study? Clearly it's not feasible to replicate the summer school model per se um, by any, uh, by many, and certainly probably not any. But we can do a number of things. We've learned a number of things through that experience about what works with students and what they want to hear. There's a huge interest from the, from the student population to do something worthwhile and to get gainful employment out of it at the end. So here are just a few uh, possibilities, and I'd be very happy to talk with anybody about any of these ideas. Uh, we already deliver many of the uh, inspirational teaching resources on our web-based plant science tree. Please visit our poster. I think it's piece seven. Um, we need your feedback as we are considering uh, future directions for this resource. I very much hope that we'll continue working with SAPS to help enthuse teachers and curriculum professionals um, to access what works at the summer school. And... I'm very interested to work with member organisations of the UK Plant Science Federation uh, to, to advertise career opportunities and studentship and training programmes. I gather, um, I'm afraid I was talking to Radio Norfolk this morning while the introductory um, uh, talk was going on, but I gather Dale Saunders uh, did raise the, the, the point about a great interest in the training programme at the John Inn is here. So... If you have, if anybody out there has training programs and you'd like us to follow it through this program, we can help make that more available to uh, undergraduates. And what we do for the summer school, we can roll out for many more students. And finally, and I think this is an important one, future research skills um, may not come from the biological sciences programs. We may need to attract uh, maths, computing, physical science students into seeing how they can use their skills to tackle these global problems. Can we uh, involve them in, uh, at their first year, early in their university education, uh, to see what things need doing in the future and where to divert their um, activities? So finally then, none of the summer school, uh, the success of the summer school could have happened without the uh, contributions from the Plant Science Research Network, and I'd like to thank them and the Gatsby Charitable Foundation. And if I can leave you on the optimistic note that uh, there's, while there's much to be done, um, I do believe that we can help undergraduates feel that there is a future for them in plant science. Thank you. Jim Monaghan from Harper Adams University College. Um, we're involved in trying to drive people into, or encourage people into, more of the crop science side. And we, we've got a similar sort of scheme, very much smaller, um, where, which I need to talk to you about, which is where we're taking second year undergrads, so before they're going to their final year, mm -hmm. to prime them. And we found that when we've given them, a, we've given them eight to ten weeks research, they go back and they carry on 
in that sector and that vein in their mm -hmm. final year mm -hmm. projects. Have you got any understanding of what people did for their honours projects? Uh, when Yes, we have, and there's a, there's a figure, well, not what they do, but that if they do an honours project in plant science, that often leads on to um, a future opportunity. I think the one thing, I mean, that's great to hear about, and there are a number of second-year vacation um, opportunities, and that is exactly the time to get them, because what we're trying to do here is infuse them in the first year, and then we will encourage them to follow their interests and their passions. Some may want to stomp off in the Andes. I mean, it's very true, you know, that that, is, that appeals to some people. It, what appeals to other people is working in a, in a laboratory, you know, data mining or so forth. The second year of a degree is a perfect time for them to test it out. So the more opportunities we have, of, of, of the more things that we know about uh, opportunities that second year, the more we can advertise and promote them to the first year.